You probably know the situation. You want to have a discussion with a business partner and a business meal in a nice restaurant in the evening is a bit more pleasant than in a cold meeting room. And of course, you want to invite him because he might hire you. The big question is, can I deduct this in accounting? Is good answer, yes, you can, specifically 70%. This means that 70% of the costs for entertaining your business partners in 2021 can be accounted for in the bookkeeping, while 30% will be considered non-deductible entertainment expenses. The tax office operates on the logic that dining out always has a certain private component. And before the tax office wants to discuss each individual entertainment receipt separately, they have stated that 70% is deductible and 30% is non-deductible. It is important to note that this only applies to the expense. If you are entitled to deduct input tax, you can deduct, claim this input tax at 100%. The rule then applies to the costs. But you need to adhere to a few things that you must consider. Specifically, you need to fill out an entertainment receipt in addition to the simple receipt. Most of you have probably seen this when you receive a bill in a restaurant. If you turn it over, you sometimes find pre-filled fields that you can fill out and sometimes you have to ask for it specifically. In practice, I can also tell you that you don't need anything from the restaurant at all. It is absolutely sufficient, for example, if you do it separately. You can take the receipt, attach it to the DIN A, standard paper size sheet, and simply write the details next to it. And this very important information must be provided, otherwise the tax office will automatically say, it is not deductible. The location of the meal is important, which is usually indicated on the receipt, and the date of the meal is typically also included. However, you must definitely record the participants of the meal, meaning who was present at this meeting, and be as precise as possible, including first and last names. It's not enough to just say, I went out to eat with Paul and Susie. You need to list all the entertained individuals by their last names. It is important that you pay together. This means that if everyone ends up paying for their own meal, you cannot deduct your share at 70%. In that case, you cannot deduct anything at all. Therefore, it is generally not such a bad idea for various reasons to invite your business partner. In addition to the entertained individuals, it is important you write the reason for the meal on the entertainment receipt. So the reason should not be too general Simply writing information meeting or sales meeting is too vague and the tax office will usually say that this is not sufficient. Instead, be as specific as possible without, of course, being overly elaborate. But you can assume that the higher the costs of the entertainment are, the more the tax office wants to know what it was actually about and why so much money was spent on the entertainment and whether this is actually proportional to the order in question or the project amount. It is also important to consider the amount of the entertainment expenses, which includes tips, for example. You can also claim the tip, which would need to be added accordingly. It would be best if the waiter or the restaurant included the tip right away, right. At the end, you sign this entertainment receipt once, ideally also by the guests. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way, but you should definitely sign the entertainment receipt at least once. That's quite a lot of information now. If you need a template or a checklist again, you can find a checklist I created for you under this video, which you can use in the future when filling out your entertainment receipts. I hope this short video has helped you. If you have any other tax-related questions, feel free to leave us a comment under this video. Otherwise, you can also check out these videos here and here, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.